a meeting in a parking lot up a mountain outside Taipei. Fritjof Detzna and Sean Guan are both techies in their early 30s. One from Germany, one from Taiwan, both startup founders. I think there's a similarity between endurance sports and being an entrepreneur. Yes. You just have to keep it up for a long time. You just can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> God. People questioning your belief. That's the hardest thing at the beginning, because you're like the only person. Soon it's going to be downhill. Fritjof Detzner yeah. set up an internet company in Hamburg when he was 16. Faster! Here in Taiwan, he's meeting people whose lives have been transformed by technology. We used to chop wood, yeah. but now we have machines chop wood. Yeah. So part of that is being replaced. And eventually, I think human, even human brain eventually will be, maybe a lot of it will be replaced by computers. They can do a lot of it. Taiwan has long been a global leader in the manufacture of computers, laptops, and smartphones. That accounts for a fifth of its GDP. But it's now facing strong competition from China, where quality is high, but costs are lower. Taiwan is moving away from hardware, but its software startup scene is thriving. Sean Guan produces autonomous video security systems that work with artificial intelligence. The smart systems are capable of learning. For example, they can now recognize and distinguish between different types of vehicles. <laughs> yeah. We build artificial intelligence, right? So, but we, are made, uh, we build products that help to solve problems where people are not really paying attention to videos, right? So this is for security and safety. So what we do is we use computers to flag important events um, for the users. The smart software can distinguish humans from other things. Sean's firm has just received almost $7 million in fresh funding from investors. Machine learning is a growth industry. Computers can analyze huge volumes of data very fast and with great accuracy, and they're getting better all the time. They outperform humans in some respects. One application is in the early detection of disease by comparing a patient's test results to a vast body of data. It's hard to predict how this will develop. There are two schools of thought. Some say it'll be great, we'll no longer have to work, everything will be automated. Others wonder how we can control something that has the potential to be much more intelligent than we are. A Buddhist monastery in the mountains. Shi Fa Yuan used to be a rocket engineer. He says the Buddha welcomed technological advances, but only once he had carefully weighed up the pros and cons. Many young people today are dependent on technology, computer games, and novelties like virtual reality. Technology fascinates us, and many people are obsessed with it. For him, technology is a useful tool and nothing more. This device measures one's heart rate. Shi Fa Yuan students use it when they learn to meditate. The numbers indicate whether they're doing it right. After the meditation, we compare the yeah. heart rate index. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't use a technology until we fully understood it. Only then can we use it properly. We must understand and be aware of the negative impacts it might have. Three, two, one, go! There are some 4,000 startup entrepreneurs in Taiwan. Here, too, it can be hard to balance family life with the stresses of business. As part of building company, you're just so busy all the time. You already give all your time pretty much to, to the company. I have to work really late um, into like 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning. So no, no matter how late I go to bed, I told my wife, you have to wake me up. Like, even if I don't move, you just like, Sean, get up. You gotta take the kids to school. It's the only time I can, you know, really just hold their hands and just walk for five minutes or 10 minutes and just have them play around.
Schools are among Sean's customers. But Taiwan has a population of just 23 million, so it's a tiny market. He sells most of his surveillance systems to Dubai and the United States. The software creates something like a virtual wall. If anyone breaches it, the system triggers an alarm. The security guard, what we want to bring to him is ability for him to be mobile. He may not be, need to look at the screen, but we'll alert him when something shows up. He may not be in the security room, where he's in the security room. Instantly, he gets a notification, hey, somebody's there. He can pull up his phone and look at the video, and if that's, some, if that's a stranger, he can react to that right away. A night market in Taipei, full of toys and games. In the future, people may well be playing against a computer rather than a human opponent. There's the example of the board game Go. There was a match involving some champion. On the 37th move, the computer introduced a strategy that hadn't existed before. The computer invented it. It's crazy when you think about it. Then later, on the 90th move, the human player adopted the same tactic. That's also totally crazy. I think we'll have to get used to the computer becoming a kind of inventor, that computers will become better at things that, until now, only human beings were good at. It's a kind of new reality.